children in the air, yes, and I'll join in that land. Tis no sorrows can be found, that's when I receive my mansion, yes, I want to roll and I want a man, the mansion robe and in glory there. You know it will always up, abound and let me, let me your throne, so and Lord, please reserve my mansion. Yes, I want to robe and Yes, in the weather, there is always feathers, shine day and night, yeah. No cold or rain will fall there, yes, the sun shines ever bright, yeah. And I'll need no big garments, I'll just wrap my robe up. And when I receive my meds, please give me a robe and... So sing about a mansion, a, a mansion robe and a crown in glory there. You know it will always, oh Lord, and let me in your throne. So, and Lord, please reserve my mansion. Yes, I want to roll. And crown, and my head is bowed and bloody now from the work that I've tried to. You know that one day be rewarded with a crown so bright and new. Yeah, now a smile so bright, there'll be no cause for a. That's when I receive my mansion. Yes, I want that robe and. So sing about a mansion, a mansion robe and a in glory there. You know we will always abound, Lord, and let, let me, let me your throne, sir. And Lord, please reserve my mansion, yeah, I want to roll. Background, so sing about a man, your mansion robe and up in glory there. Church, say amen. amen. God is a mighty God, say amen. amen. If the Lord is a healing Lord, say amen. amen. To all of our visitors, it's such a delight to have you in our worship as we celebrate our Lord on this Lord's Day. God would have it that the saints come together on the first day of the week to praise him and to honor him. Give him his glory on our worship Sunday. So it's a delight to have uh, all of you. Also, uh, I, I got to give a thanks to Sam and to uh, Kenton and to Cornell for standing in my stead for the last three weeks that I've been away. Um, it's, such, it's such a good feeling to know that God... Uh, gives the church capable men that can uh, stand before his people and to share uh, a word from the Lord. And God has somehow blessed Southlake that many of our men can stand where I'm standing and uh, find a text where uh, members can learn from and apply principles from to help them on their life. So I'm grateful for that. I'm very, very grateful. Uh, I have a lot to be thankful for on this Sunday morning. Uh, be patient with me. I hadn't been here in three weeks, so 
uh, put away your clocks and your, you know, I, I just let me, just let me talk for a little about a little while. I will get to my text, but uh, I'm grateful today. Today is, uh, uh, y'all call her Pat, I call her Ed Shell. She's one of the same. So it's our anniversary day. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, we've been married now for 37 years. I, we've known each other some 40 plus, but she decided she got tired of me just hanging around and decided to marry me. So, so she said yes, and I said yes, and we were married 37 years ago. And then uh, we had the time of our lives. We sure we'll pick up and go when we wanted to. We just had uh, a great beginning, and then two years later, somebody came along. Keith messed up everything. <laughs> uh, so how I, I would get off work late at night. I worked at General Motors. I would get off like 11 at night. And uh, I come home and I said, let's go to Waterberg. And late night, we just pick up and go. So as that big head boy came, we couldn't do none of that stuff. But uh, I'm so excited for uh, today that God allowed us to see this time together. I'm so grateful for your many, many expressions of love for and shall, especially all of your fervent prayers that you prayed for and shall during the course that she fell ill and that she is still recovering from. It's, don't let nobody tell you, Jackie, that prayer don't work. It, it works. Can't nobody tell me prayer doesn't work. Even when God says no, it still works. Yes. And God even sometimes says no. But uh, aside from that, be prayerful for those who stand in the need of prayer. It's good to see Tamar here on today. He um, has some things going on and uh, physically, and I'm prayerful that God will help him through all of that. But it's good to see him. There are others that may not have been feeling well, uh, it's good to know that you are on your road to feeling better. Uh, keep Simone in prayer. There are others I know that I cannot think of at the moment to uh, remind us, but you know who they are because if you are praying church, I already know they're on your prayer list. Uh, I want to use for a subject this morning and uh, something that I wanted to do some time ago and and, and I sort of set it aside, and then things happen. And so now that I can pick it back up, uh, it means a lot more to me. Now than Annette, when I first thought I would preach this lesson. So uh, I want us to look uh, at the idea of what's my focus as a question mark. And so we have many things that uh, holds our focus and uh, gets our attention and um, holds us looking at. And so I, I wanted to use a text that I shared with my class in the midst of my storm because I wanted to share that with them. Uh, it's found in Numbers chapter 13, and it actually carries over into chapter 14, but I don't have time uh, to do both chapters. So I'll, I'll do one part. Uh, this morning, and I'll give you a life lesson from it, and then I'll do the other next Sunday if God's will. So, but I want to use a, a text found in Numbers chapter 13, and I'll be there uh, in just a moment. But I want us to think about what's what's my focus today, and what has been my focus that's driving me from day to day. Uh, we all have at some point been told to be focused and to stay focused because something of grave importance needs to have our attention. We all have been distracted by some small event in life or some catastrophic event and everything in between both extremes. My family, as many of you know, that uh, have experienced an unexpected storm here recently. 
a, a kind of storm that came seemingly out of nowhere. And I know uh, many of you already know what that, that's like in your life. And, uh, and, and, and my storm ain't much different than your storm. Uh, but the idea is that this storm that hit uh, my family on September the 13th was of great magnitude and it caused uh, such riveting winds. It took me, Kevin, uh, to my core. Is that all right? Yeah. Will y'all walk with me? And, and uh, this is therapeutic for me. Uh, not only is it a lesson for you, but it's a lesson, uh, Marvin, for me uh, as well. But, but you know what that's like. There have been things in your that has taken you to your core. Yes, yes, uh, if you had spoken to me when the storm first and some of you did, I can hardly talk of getting emotional. My focus was all over the place, Shank. Uh, as one, my because of what the storm had done to the love of Then I remembered what I've always said. Nothing can ever reach you or touch you until it first goes. Y'all help me with this now. I don't care who family it is, I don't care who relative it is, nothing would ever reach you until it first goes through the hand of God. And so since it had already gone through God's hand, and now we're in the midst of a storm that I just don't want to go through right about now. No amount of time would or could change the course of this storm. It's here now, and its winds are blown. Although I could not teach my Old Testament class, I sent them the text, as I mentioned already, I wanted them to be a part of my storm, and even though they may not have been directly in the storm, they felt the effects of the storms because of their relationship to me. So I sent them a text. The text I sent them helped me. What it did was it helped me, Cheryl, regain my focus. Uh, and I to share that uh, this with them and because it doesn't matter what kind of storm it is every storm ain't always the same every storm doesn't always hit us the same way a storm is a storm no matter what it is uh, it our focus if we allow it to go with me so I went to Numbers chapter 13 and chapter 14. And this text helped me to refocus me, to realign me, and to remind me. And it helped me to calm down just enough to allow me to appropriately focus on what I needed to focus in the midst of my storm. Yes, it wasn't until then I was able to go to the hotel, hospital room and stand over her bed and say a prayer I had not prayed until I revisited a text that God reminded me that God is still in control. Yes, is that all right? So, so, I, 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 I believe that if we can start to 
the message and I can lesson from a text like this what you may be going on in your life. And I already told you that everybody's storm ain't the same. Your storm, they have have you're dealing with. But nonetheless, it's your storm. And I have your Bibles turned to We'll start about verse 16. This text, and then I'm going to give you, uh, by the time we get to the end of the text, I'll give you a life lesson. And then next I'll try to give you two more life lessons. By then, we'll be in chapter 14. But just walk with me uh, as we look at uh, chapter 13, starting at about... Uh, verse 16. I'm reading the New King James version because I like a certain phrase that's in there that will uh, help us in our life uh, life application. Look at verse 16. Uh, let me give you a bit of uh, a setup to 16 now. Uh, now, this text opens up uh, running the uh, Israelites are trying their best to get to the promised land and uh, they've had their share of ups and downs. They have angered God to no end with their sense of uh, not appreciating all that God has done for them while they are wandering in uh, the wilderness. And uh, by the time our text picks up, they already have a religion. They've already been uh, uh, given a law um, by God on Mount Sinai. Uh, they've been given the Decalogue. The Decalogue is the Ten Commandments. They've given them the intro to the rest of the laws that will come shortly. Not only that, have God made them a holy nation uh, at the Mount of Sinai, uh, what he's also did is he had his people to build a tabernacle. So now are they, they are not only a holy people, now they got a place of worship. Uh, the place of worship is a tent that is portable, which means no matter where they go, they have a tabernacle where God comes and they could worship him. Is that all right? All that has happened. And now they are so close to the promised land that they probably could throw a rock over there. The place is called Kadesh. And they are right on the border of going into the promised land, uh, and that's where our text picks up. At the beginning of the text, Moses sent 12 spies into the land. These spies stayed there, church, 40 days. And uh, having been there 40 days, now it's time to come back to the camp and tell the rest of the family of Israel what they saw and what's the next move. Y'all understand? Uh, this is the place of promise. God promised it to the patriarchs. Uh, that's Abraham, that's Isaac, that's Jacob. He promised to them, I'm going to give you a land that's flowing with milk and honey. And if that don't be all, once Moses comes on the scene, when God calls Moses in Exodus chapter 3, Roughly around verse 8, he tells Moses, listen, you guys, are you going to go get my people out of Egypt? Because I got something waiting for them in the promised land. Y'all see that? You see that? So now they're on their way. Now they're just a, a stone throw away from the promised land. And this is what happens. Verse 16 says, these are the names of the men whom uh, Moses sent to spy on out the land. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, he says spy out. Uh, uh, God has already given them the land. The spying out has to do with the idea that Moses says, I just want us to go look to see how we're going to strategize and how we're going to plan to go in. Not a question of if we can take it. It's a matter of how we're going to take it. So he sends 12 spies uh, into the land. And Moses called Hosea, the son of Nun, Joshua. Uh, verse 17 says, Then Moses 
uh, sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains. Is that in your Bibles? Verse 18 says, see what the, what the land looks, a uh, land is like. Whether the people uh, who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many. Verse 19 says, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, whether there is forest there or not. Then he says, be of good courage. You ought to underline that because that's going to be one of our life lessons. He says, be of good courage. And when he says that uh, to them, uh, he's not uh, telling them as an option. He's telling them as a command. And bring some of the fruit of the land. Now, the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. That was probably mid-July. Now, watch verse 21. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin. As far as Rehob, near the entrance of Hamath. Verse 22 says, uh, and they went up through the south and came to Hebron, Ahimah, Shishai, and Telmah, the descendants of Anak, were there. Now, Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. Verse 23. Then they came to the valley of Ishkol, and there cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. Y'all see that? They carried it between how many men? Two of them on a pole. The grapes were so humongous, it took two men uh, with a pole, one in front and one behind. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. Verse 24 says, and the place was called the valley of Ishkal because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. Verse 25 says, and they returned uh, from spying out of the land after 40 days. That's a long time to be spying. Uh, I'm thinking they would like a couple of days, uh, Marvin, and, and scope out over there. Uh, they, they, they took a total of 40 days to scope out all of the land so they should have been able to give us a thorough report. Watch 26. Now they departed and came back to who? To Moses. I'm seeing that you're with me. Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Uh, 27 says, then they told him and said, uh, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly Watch this. He says, it truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. 28 says, nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified. Not only are they strong and fortified, they are very long. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Now, Anak folk are giants. Uh, I don't have time to give you all the history. 
Just know that they, they were just larger than life. Uh, but they're not the only ones. Goliath was a giant in his own right. Uh, but what I got to tell you, even though they saw the descendants of Anak there, but everybody there were not Anak's descendants. Some folk look just like them. That's important to the text because when they tell their story, it makes it look like that everybody were giants. Look at verse 29. The Amalekites dwelled in the land of the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwelled in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea uh, along the banks of the Jordan. Then verse 30 says, then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession for we are able. Y'all see that? You see that? Don't miss it. Uh, now, this is time for reporting. Some of them told them that there are giants in the land. Part of the report said the walls are tall and, and huge. And the fruit, these grapes are huge alike. And then Caleb says, he quiets the people down uh, 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 and said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we, will, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they may have been. These folk have been in battle. They practiced warfare much longer than Israel. They had a affordable fortress. They were able to do uh, much harm to Israel. But that was of no concern to God. God could care less if Alex's descendants were already there. God already knew they were there. You got to go back to Genesis uh, chapter 11 and 12. Uh, God tells uh, 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 the genealogy of things. Uh, whose descendants would be where? Watch 31. But the men who had gone up uh, with him said, We are not able to, to go up against the people, the people, for they are stronger than we. Now here comes, here comes the bad report. The bad report is going to focus. I told you it's all about what we focus on. The bad report, report focused on the enemies that needed to be defeated rather than the power of God to defeat those enemies. Watch 32. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land in which they had spied out saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. You see how, them, you see how grave it's starting to look? The more they talk, the more horrible uh, 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 it looks. And after a while, when folks start hearing how bad it is, after a while, they become afraid. But listen to what they do. Listen to what these uh, ten do. Uh, they said the land which uh, we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. That simply wasn't true. They, they, they started making up stuff in their report that wasn't true. The evidence uh, about the land uh, was contradictory by the enormous grapes that they brought back. The land wasn't going to swallow them up. The land was productive and fruitful. Here, look at the grapes. Sometimes when we lose focus or we focus on the wrong thing, we start making up stuff. We try to make folks think it's worse. And, and, and it frustrates me. Even some of us do the same thing. But things ain't to our liking, and we focus on the stuff not to our liking. Then we say, stop like me, a whole lot of work. Look at them. But it all boils down to what they are focusing on. When you exaggerate things, you promote fear and you promote anxiety. 
Now go back to my story. When the storm hit, I looked and I focused on the things that had been done to my wife. It promoted fear and anxiety because that's all I focused on. I'd never seen her in this place, in this shape, and so it promoted fear. I, I, tears were quickly forming my eyes. All I could see was how bad things were. There were some giants there, but they were the exception. They were not the rule. In other words, everybody weren't giants over there. Most folk were not. And the more they told their story, Lord, the more they worked it. And that's how they do it sometimes, even in the church. Uh, sometimes folk will come to me and want to tell us how bad we really are. And they will exaggerate. They just add stuff to it. Don't have an answer for it. Don't want to jump in and help out. They just mad. Watch 33. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, uh, came from the giants. And then they said, we were like grasshoppers. To who? To our own sight. In other words, uh, their perspective, so, uh, their focus said, we look like grasshoppers uh, in our sight. And so we were in their sight. And the bottom line is, uh, uh, they had lost focus. We began to worry too much uh, uh, about what other people think and what other people do. And so we stopped thinking about what God thinks of us. Those folk didn't care hardly anything about the Israelites. They were really insignificant. Let me give you a life lesson. I have my seat. Life lesson one. You got to get this. Our mental focus affects our faith. I got to come down there. I, 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 this is, I, I read all of that. I took my time to read all of that to give you a life lesson you can take home. So I'm telling you, I, I, I know this from my own. I know many of you uh, know this uh, uh, from your own. Um, uh, our mental focus affects our faith, it affects our attitude, uh, Ronnie, it affects our mindset, and it also affects our course of action. I'll say it again, this is your life lesson. Uh, our, our mental focus uh, affects our it affects our attitude. It affects our mindset. It affects our course of action. We start acting out what we focus on. As a point of behavior, as a point of thinking, because I, we are zoomed in, we are locked in to something. And we won't let it go. Even in our relationships at home, sometimes we can't have a good argument with your mate because your, one of the mates are locked into something. That's their focus. Don't know nothing else matter. No, you can't say nothing else. You can't even reason with them. Once they get locked in their focus, I'm telling you, it's going to affect their attitude. It's going to affect their mindset. You can't change their mind no matter what. You're going to help me now, huh? You're going to help me now. That's a life lesson. Watch this. Watch this. Twelve men, there were twelve of us. Twelve men walked through the land of Canaan. They all saw the exact same thing. They saw, all twelve saw giants in the land. All twelve saw huge walls that fortified the city. They all saw the huge grapes 
10 of them determined that uh, Israel could never, ever conquer the land. But two were convinced that it would be easy to move right in and possess uh, the land. After all, God did promise the land to them. Let me tell you something. Uh, uh, some of y'all, oh, let me rephrase that. Some of us, some of us can't enjoy the promises God has given to us because we are so focused on something that ain't got nothing to do with a promise God has for you. We spend countless hours in pain and depression and worry, anxiety, and discomfort. You can't sleep at night. And God promised you sleep and rest, but you won't take it. Let me tell you the difference between the two. The difference in what the spies are focused on made the difference in how they responded and how they reported. Ten of them admitted that there were uh, lots of big grapes, uh, but, but their main concern was with the giants and the tall walls. They were focused on the problem that was ahead of them and on their own strength to overcome these problems. That was their focus. They weren't, they didn't care about nothing else. All they, giants, the walls were huge. That's the problem. And that's all they realized. They said, we ourselves cannot beat these guys. And yes, you're right. You need a God to help you. But you're focused on what you can do and what you cannot do. After reading this, I soon realized I can only do so much for my wife. Uh, sometimes your hands are tied. You want to do so much more, but you are. I don't care. Sometimes with our children, we want to we want to help our children so much because we've gone through life ourselves. We know the ups and downs. We know where the potholes are. We know everyone. We try our best to help our kids, and sometimes our hands are tied. Sometimes you can only do so much. I had to change my focus on what I could do to what he could do. That changed my type of prayer. What I said to him, I said, Lord, if you do what you can do, I don't know what you know. I cannot do what you do, but just do something. And I promise you, Lord, I'll do my part. It changed how I felt, Glenda. It changed uh, my whole perspective. The tears start to dry up more. I start looking at ways I could physically, mentally, emotionally do for her because I knew God had me. Let's go look at another part of this. Jacob, and, or rather Joshua and Caleb, on the other hand, were focused not on the immediate obstacles, but on the prize that lay beyond those obstacles. Don't miss that. My prayer was like, Lord, if you help her, if you bring her through this, if you heal her, I'll, be, I'll do so much better for her when I bring her home. When she's more in my way. Okay. Step out. Took for granted, Renee. I know I did. I'm being honest. I'm being repentant. Uh, stuff I, I took for granted. She always did. Can I just talk? Uh, she, uh, and I, I texted my son. And I said, I said, shame on me. And I was caring. I, I became so transparent through the process. And she, and she takes care of all the bills. She knows every bill we have. And she takes care of them. She lines them up. She schedules them. And she pays them. All I do is bring up, make sure the check hits the, <laughs> hits the account. 
while she was in the hospital, Keith, there was a bill that she handled 100%. Not financially, but in terms of organizing and setting it up. Uh, I called them. I said, I just want to know, is it, has she sent off a payment? Uh, because the date of payment is what? It's close. It's almost due. And they, uh, they said, sir, I'm sorry. I can't tell you. <laughs> and I'm the head of the house. <laughs> so I, so D, I thought I'd be smart. I, I wait a few minutes and I, I call, I call to get what? Y'all know, y'all know how it works. Then I had to put on a different face. I had to put on my side face. I said, my wife's in the hospital. She said, I see you. She can't talk to y'all. Can you at least tell me if it's in the air somewhere, Congressman? <laughs> they said, sir, I'm sorry. <laughs> they wouldn't even take my money. But I, I'm trying to give them money. I'm trying to like, I'll give you some money. I'm, I'm not trying to get into it. Uh, I just want to give you the money. They said, sir, I'm sorry. I said, the most we can do is allow you, a pay, allow you to make another payment. I said, I can't afford to make two on the same account. No matter how difficult things are, God will do his part. You do your part. But don't keep doing the same thing. I told her immediately when I got home, after she rested for a few days, I said, honey, we got to change this thing. Because we don't want to be caught out there unnecessarily like that. We have to do things different in our house. I'm sharing this with you so that you don't get caught into it uh, before a storm hits your house. I don't want a storm to hit your house. But if it is, you be ready. Some of us have accounts where the mates don't know nothing. They were not focused. Joshua and Caleb, they weren't focused on the immediate obstacles. They were focused on the prize that was well beyond the obstacles. They were focused on God's power and faithfulness in the past. If he's done it for me before, why wouldn't he do it again? And that is what convinced them that they could devour their enemy like bread. Benjamin, this kind of faith ain't the power of positive thinking. That ain't, that ain't what we coach people on counseling. This, ain't, this, this kind of thinking that Caleb and Joshua had, it ain't this thing we like to call the power of positive thinking. It has nothing to do with it. But what it does have to do with it is, it is a conscious decision. You choose and I choose to place our trust in God and to put our trust in his provisions rather than on the problems that stand directly in our way. God's people are frequently and seemingly insurmountably uh, face obstacles. But the Lord calls us to rely on his strength. The only way that my wife is sitting where she's sitting this morning Ain't got a whole lot of what I did. But it has a whole lot of what God has done. His strength, not our own, to overcome. He himself said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my I couldn't, have, I couldn't even be here this morning if it were not for the Lord. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. 
What can man do to me? Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Whatever you focus on, that's what has your that's what has your attention. It has your attitude. It has your faith. It has your mindset. It's all wrapped up in faith. No matter what you face, you're not facing it alone. Use God. Rely on God. Lean on God. Change your prayer life. Talk to God about it. See what God uh, wants to do. But yet you need to do your part to see what God has in store for the rest of the journey. Let's pray. God in heaven, thank you for being so kind to us who don't deserve that kind of gracious kindness. Lord, thank you for your mercies. And you make them deliverable every morning we wake. We have mercies that we don't deserve. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your healing hand. Thank you for your providence. Thank you for your provisions. They're always enough. Well, thank you even times you say no because you know all things and you do all things well. You're just, you're righteous, you're always sovereign. To that, Father, we are a church that's thankful. It's in your son we say this prayer of gratitude. In Jesus' name, amen. I know you may be struggling with something, a storm, or something you have to deal with. But all I'm telling you is, make sure you focus on the right thing. For so long, we miss out on the promises of God because our focus are on things we cannot change. But talk to the Lord, and he'll, he'll come to your rescue. He will not abandon you. He knows what you're going through. He has made promises to you. And trust in him. If you want to come to the Lord, you come like we all have had to come for redemption. You come by hearing the gospel. You come by believing it. You come by confessing who the Son of Man is. You come by repenting of your sins. You come uh, being baptized and your sins are washed away. You come by being added to the body of Christ. Then you get to walk that walk and know that God says, I'll always be with you. No matter what storm I allow to come your way. And then there's many of us who are in the Lord's church. We need to repent. I had to repent because I got caught up in my fear. I got caught up in my pain. I got caught up in my anxiety first. I know I'm human, but God expects us as humans to do better. Especially as long as we've been in the church, as long as many of us have. He don't expect us to always jump to fear first, especially our, from seasoned saints. So you can't always blame the flesh. You got to do better. Whatever your storm is, God has the answer. As together we stand and sing a song of invitation. Why not? Why not come? Ask me not, O oh gentle same. Say, I said, oh, why don't you hear my humble cry? No, and why don't others now call me? do you not pass me? And we're calling you, say, 